Come on in, welcome to my home. Today we are going to talk about removing pesticides from your fruits and vegetables. This was suggested by one of my patrons, Yvonne, on you can become part of the Patreon group, but we'll talk about this later. And this does contain a product which I got from Amazon because I'm an Amazon tester and there'll be links to below to it, but we'll get to all of that as we go along. So let's start with the, what I consider the obvious. Most people don't want to eat pesticides on their food. I would think that that would be fairly obvious. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to. So the question becomes, what can we do about this? And there are several different ways to handle this from the very, very obvious, just rinse or wash your foods under running water. That should be enough, right? Well, a lot of people do not feel that that is enough. And the thing about this is I'm going to show you the different ways that it can be done. However, since I do not have any of the chemical or any of the testing things to say this is the absolute best way that it can be done, I'm just showing you these different ways you can decide how you want to do this. There is one way that I won't be showing you, and I will tell you what that is right off the bat. The one way that I won't be showing you is doing the uh, blanching the food. Blanching is just the process of dipping whatever food that you have in hot water, like boiling hot water, dipping it for 5 to 30 seconds to kill off whatever's on the item and then putting it into a cold water bath. Blanching can be good for most vegetables, I think. It is not something that I would necessarily do to do this, simply because it, even if you do blanch something, it does momentarily start cooking the item. And that's not something that I want to do. However, some of these things are really interesting. And the other part about this is, no matter what you do, all of these use a lot of water. And I mean a lot of water. So if water is an issue in your area, you might want to think about this and really decide how you want to do this because a couple of them are going to make the water so it's not that great for other things because some of this water you could just use on your plants in your garden, in your house, but other, others of this not wouldn't necessarily do this. So what am I talking about? Well, it's really easy. I have three bowls or vessels here that I'm going to be doing the first part of this in. In the first one, I'm going to be using a baking soda soak. In the baking soda soak, I am using two teaspoons of baking soda, because I forgot I needed the extra water. Two teaspoons of baking soda. To that, I'm going to add four cups of water. Next, I'm going to use sea salt. I'm going to add one tablespoon of sea salt to four cups of water. Now, if you do not have sea salt, you could use Himalayan salt. That's up to you. My final one, I am going to use vinegar. This is just regular vinegar. I'm using one cup of vinegar, four cups of water. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that everything gets mixed. That, of course, is our baking soda. Then we have our salt and a little mix of our vinegar water. Today I am using handy dandy grapes because I had them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of each of those in. So for, the, for, so for all of these, I'm going to let them sit for 20 minutes. You can go anywhere from 10, anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, but I'm going to sit all of these for 20 minutes and then come back to them. I will be sw switching these around, like flipping them over to make sure that they are thoroughly covered as we go, but that's where we are right now. So let's, now we just wait. All right, so everything has been soaking. I am now going to go over to the sink, rinse it, then we'll come back here. Alright, everything has been cleaned. Now it comes down to taste and texture. This was the baking soda. This 
sea salt seems sort of weird. Realistically, I can't tell any difference. Like, I can tell zero differences between any of these. Are they clean without scientific equipment, which you probably don't have, I don't have, I'm not 100% certain. However, the studies which are linked down below says that these are fairly effective ways of cleaning off pesticides from your uh, fruits and vegetables. So what did our experiment show us? Well, quite a few different things. If you think about the ingredients that you have or the things that you have available to you, you have water, hopefully. And while all of these things did use a lot of water, they it makes it really hard to test it. Because what happens is, when you think about water, the fact that when you're using something, it had, would have to be measured against just using water alone. So using the water in the vinegar, using the water in the baking soda, using the water in the sea salt, they all have different reasons that they accomplish removing pesticides and those sort of things from our contaminants, from our fruits and vegetables. Now, what I did find is that after a few minutes, both the baking soda and the sea salt, the grapes had a weird texture. They felt sort of rough to the skin. Wasn't something that I really liked. The vinegar I had no problems with, so it, it worked out really well. Now, let's talk about something that you can buy. The device that you can buy is the Salate, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, fruit and salad washing machine. It is a fruit cleaning device. It uses water, it's USB rechargeable, ultrasonic to produce fruit purifier, and it uses um, an ion purification system. So you're saying, well, what exactly does this do? And it's really a simple kind of thing what it does. It uses hydroxy water ion purification technology. And that really is effective. It does, it is a great way to purify um, fruit, vegetables, it says it can purify meat, shrimp, uh, tableware, those sort of things, simply by putting in the rechargeable device into the water that it is in, and then it goes for five minutes, and then of course you rinse it off just like before. This is one of those cool things that you it uses way less water, way less just about everything, simply because it uses a it uses technology that then takes the um, anything like the bacterias or those sort of things which are on your fruits and vegetables, and uses the ion technology to purify it. Did I think, and when I used this, did I think it worked? Yeah, I think it worked. It tasted good. I had no problems with it when I used it. It did take way less time, which I totally enjoyed the fact that it didn't take as nearly as long. It is rechargeable, which I do also like because I can charge it up and then I don't have to worry about am I out of that thing like baking soda, salt, or vinegar, am I out of it? Uh, when I rinsed it, I did just rinse it off, so that is nice. But it also, um, it, it, it's there's the science behind it. So it's really cool to use. I can use it in just a big container, and I can use it with a variety of things without making it taste strange or have a weird texture, because I know, I, that's why I used it on lettuce, because I know lettuce can do weird things if you add salt to lettuce, or if you add a baking soda to lettuce, it sort of gets also a weird texture. This did not have any of those problems, and I totally enjoyed it, and it made a great salad for the next day. So, when it comes to cleaning off your fruits and vegetables, can, what can you use, like I said from the beginning? You can use running water. There is no reason why you couldn't use running water. Running water use works effectively. Is it the best? I don't know. I mean, from what we from the studies that I've read and everything which is linked down below, running water is effective, but there are always better ways to do this, and what's always better is to clean it versus just not using it. Will I be using our handy dandy device that I got from Amazon? Yeah, I actually liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. It's rechargeable. It uses less running water. 
sort of, I guess. So yeah, and the science behind it definitely says that it's effective. So yes, I will probably be using this, but once again, you still have to work with what you have, what works effectively for you, and what you feel comfortable with and can afford. I can tell you right now that I always have vinegar on hand, I always have sea salt on hand, and I always have baking soda on hand. Those are the things that I always have. Now, the one thing which I will say about the vinegar and the sea salt is the fact that both of them were hard to mix up. So, I don't know, and plus the texture was just really weird. But it was fun. This was a really interesting thing to do because I got to try out something which I never would have tried out without this. And so, yeah, I like that. That was a lot of fun. Now, if you have ideas for doing videos like this, let me know down in the comments because I'd love to hear some ideas for our new videos. I'd like to take this time to thank these people from Patreon and also my channel members because they help me come up with these ideas and they get to see these videos first. They get them early so that, you know, they can see all that stuff. You can become part of the channel members and or part of Patreon by just pledging your support. It really does help the channel. We can grow and do bigger things. And I really enjoy doing this. I can hardly wait to go eat some grapes now. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope we get to see you again the next time you start.